In part one of this four part tutorial, we made this bike rack dynamic so that when scaled, its parts would repeat and position based off of that scale. In part two, we're going to add this bike to the component as a child component. Grab your select tool and click on the bike. You can zoom in on it too. We didn't make this bike component, but we are going to make it dynamic. When making existing geometries or components dynamic, it's always a good idea to know exactly where the component axis is and which direction all the parts are in relation to that axis. Because of that, we're going to do a little deconstruction and reassembly of this bike. In the component attributes browser with the bike selected, let's add the rotation attribute set. Notice that the rote Z has a value of 84. Let's straighten this out by making that zero. Next, with the select tool, we're going to explode these geometries. Right click and select explode. With the rotation tool and the geometry still selected, we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. I'll click once to set the rotation point, click here to start the rotation, and click here to finish it. At this point, the bike is facing the same direction that it's going to initially be parked in the bike rack. Let's turn it back into a component. Before we do that, I'm going to use the line tool to make a little helper geometry. And I'll start that line right about here on this crossbar. I'll hit my down arrow key to lock that in the blue direction. And then I'm going to reference this low point on the front tire. Notice that the geometries of the bike are still selected, but that line that we just drew is not. With the select tool, right click on the bike and select make component. We'll give it a name of my bike. Let's click set component axes. And this part is very important, so I'll take a moment to explain it. Notice that the color and the direction of the axes on this icon are the same as the SketchUp default axes. That's important because it makes writing and understanding formulas later on much easier. We're going to place this axis at the bottom of that helper line that we just drew. It's a three click process. The first click sets the point. The second click is for the red direction and the third is for the green. After you've done that, click create. Because that helper line was not included with the selected parts, it's not a part of the component. You can select it and hit delete. Here's another tip that'll make modeling dynamic components easier. From the window menu option, go to model info, select components, and hit this tick, show component axes. This axis and its location is going to be key to the controlled imperfection that we're eventually going to add to this model. Getting this bike inside of our dynamic bike rack is actually quite easy. With the select tool, click on the bike. Then from the edit menu, go to cut. Double click on our bike rack to edit it. Go back to edit and select paste. It doesn't matter where this goes initially, but let's just position it close to that left hand side. To exit out of this component edit, let's grab the select tool and click outside of this component edit box. Now if we take a look at our component attributes dialog, we can see the bike rack has two children component, rack part, which we created in part one, and my bike, the component we deconstructed and reassembled. Under the my bike child component, Let's add the size and position attributes. Because we'll eventually need copies, let's also add the copies attribute. Here's a little reminder from the previous tutorial. If these values are gray, that effectively means that they're going to change based off of what happens at a parent level, such as scaling. Watch what happens to the bike as I scale this component. I scale the component to 0.14 of its original size. Because these values are not locked in, this Linux value reflects that 0.14 scale, and we don't want that, so I'm going to undo. Let's lock in the bike sizes by adding an equal sign before each number. The values that you see for the bike's position attributes are relative to its parent's axes, 
we'll set those to equal zero. But before we do, you might be wondering why we're not seeing the bikes axes after we just set it a little bit ago. The reason is you only see the axes for non-nested components in your SketchUp model. If you double click on this component to edit it, it'll show up. There it is, right there. Let's exit out of that component edit. Set the bike's position attribute values to all equal zero. Remember that these position attributes are relative to the parent's position. That's why when you move the parent component, the bike moves with it. I'd like to show you a potential issue that you may encounter that is related to a child component's position attributes. Remember that we entered equals zero for each one of these values. That equal sign technically makes this a formula. And that formula travels with the bike component, whether it's inside of the parent shell or outside of it. If I edit this component, select the bike, and then I'll do an edit copy. I'll exit that component edit, and then do an edit paste. I'll put the bike over here. And initially, nothing seems wrong. But if I redraw that by right-clicking, hovering over dynamic components, and selecting redraw, watch what happens. When entered as formulas, these values are relative to a parent component. And if there is no parent component, they become relative to the default axes location in your SketchUp model. I'll erase that byte copy. It's just an issue that I wanted you to be aware of. It's finally time to make this bike repeat and position inside this dynamic component. Now eventually, we want the copies of this bike to fall on these open gaps. Here, 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 and so forth. Now, I've already measured that distance, and that happens to be 25.25 inches. That's the number we'll use in the copies formula. Enter equals parent, exclamation mark, Linux, divided by 25.25, and then again, subtract one to account for the original. I still have formula view turned on, so I need to turn that off to see the result of that formula. As we saw with the rec part in the previous tutorial, the copies are initially all right on top of one another, so they only appear as one. Let's edit the X position to be equals copy times 25.25. It's getting close to what we need, but we have to account for this distance from the edge of the bike rack to the position of the first bike. I've measured that distance and it's 20.4 inches. All we need to do is add this number to our X position formula. Let's zoom out and give our dynamic component a try. After scaling this a few times, I can see a small problem. Notice how some bikes extend beyond the last rack? That's because the parent's Linux value is not necessarily a multiple of the width of a rack part. The parent's Linux might be just shy of accommodating one more rack part copy, but because the my bike copy has a shorter Linux, some of its copies might still be created. This can easily be fixed by making the parent Linux snap to multiples of the rack part length. The formula to do that is round current Linux and that Linux needs to be in double quotes divided by the Linux of the rack part and I can reference that by clicking on it right here. Then that function is multiplied by the Linux of the rack part again. That fixed our problem. 
I'll turn on formula view to explain what's going on here. The current Linux function is equal to the Linux value that was just applied. So in other words, whenever this component is scaled, a new Linux is being applied. That number is being divided by the rec part Linux right here. The result of that is inside of this round function. So it's always going to equal a whole integer. That whole integer is then multiplied once again by the rack part Linux. So in other words, it's always going to be a multiple of 75.7. .7. At this point, our dynamic component should be functioning pretty well. But of course, no one or group of people are going to park their bikes this perfect in a bike rack. In part three of this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the RAND between function to add the controlled imperfection to this bike rack.